you know something <laughs> something truly happened and now now I, I know oh he he touched me said he touched me have anyone been touched on this morning hallelujah have anyone been touched on this week hallelujah have anyone been touched on this month hallelujah knowing that God is with you and if God be for you then who can be against you Hallelujah. To know that God knows all about you. He knows all about your kids. He knows all about your problems, your circumstances. Have anyone been touched on this week? Has anyone been touched on today? The fact that you got up on today and you made your way to Morning Star. Hallelujah. When you could have stayed in your bed. God touched you when he woke you up. God touched you when you got up this morning. God touched you when you got when you came over here to Morning Star Church. Have anyone been touched on this morning? Let's give God our glory thank you Lord because it could have went another way thank you Lord because the report could have went another way thank you Lord because my situation could have went another way thank you Lord for touching me Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment, God. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I come to worship you, God. I come to lift your name up, God. I come to give your name glory, God, because God, beside you, there is no other God. I come to give your name glory, God, because you are the lift of my head, God. I come to give your name glory, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, have your way in this place, God. Father, move by your power and move by your spirit, God. Turn off the living God for fresh in here. Turn off the living God, let your presence dwell in here from the pulpit to the door God let someone get what they need on today God let someone get a word from you God let someone be healed on today God let someone be delivered on today God let someone be free on today God Father it's all about you God I decrease that you may increase in me God have your way spirit of the living God and I thank you for being God over all I thank you for being God over all I thank you for being God over all you are the God of Abraham Isaac in Jacob. Huh? And Father, we worship you on today. Huh? And we bind up every hand of the enemy huh? that's trying to keep your people stuck. Huh? That's trying to keep your people depressed. Huh? That's trying to keep your people in a bound place. Huh? The blood of Jesus cover. The blood of Jesus set free. Huh? The blood of Jesus deliver. Huh? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! Have your way in this place, God. Oh, no, no. It's about you, Lord. It's all about you. Let's thank God on today. How? Because he who the sun set free is free indeed. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that rests through and abide in this place. We thank you, Father, for healing, deliverance, and breakthrough in this place, God. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles in this place, God. Father, we thank you for a release in this place, God. Father, we thank you for the mighty works that you're going to do in this place, God. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, uh, it haven't even entered the hearts of men the things that the Lord is about to do uh, in the lives of his people. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Father, we say thank you. We bless you, we honor you, and we glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 He's still worthy. He's still a mighty God. He's still able to do exceeding abundantly above all. You can ask all things. Hallelujah. But let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Hallelujah. 
and I'm going to be reading for you here, and I'm coming out the book of Exodus. I'm coming out the book of Exodus, and I'm going to start in the 14th, uh, 14th chapter. 14th chapter, I'm going to start at the 10th verse, and I'm reading from the ESV, English Standard Version of the Bible. I have to put my glasses on. Hallelujah. You know, after you get to a certain age, you know, got to wear, you need extra eyes. Hallelujah. So I will be reading Exodus 14, starting at the 10th verse. And here's the reading of God's holy word. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians was marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Then Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Somebody say today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silenced. So far the scripture and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Hallelujah. If I had to pick a topic for this message, for this, God has given me two topics. Hallelujah. If I had to choose a topic, it would be you're going from labor to delivery. And I'm coming to let you know on today, it's all about to make sense. It's all about to make sense. It, Kia, what do you mean? Let's go, let's talk about my brother Moses. Let's talk about my brother Moses. Here it is, um, when we go to the book of the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, Exodus Greek word means departure. Greek word for Exodus, departure. The book of Exodus describes the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt. The book of Exodus focuses on the, the development nation of Israel. The main theme of Exodus is redemption. The deliverance of the children of Israel from the bondage in Egypt is a type of the redemption, and Moses was led, Mo Moses who led them is a type of Christ. And when we, and when the purpose, the purpose of the book is to record the events of Israel developments from Egypt and develop as a nation. Moses, who was the author, hallelujah. Be, now, before, before we begin there, before we even begin, there's some important information you need to know in order to understand this lesson. Joseph, first Joseph is the greatest type of Christ in the scriptures. We see this in over 150 Bible references in Genesis 37 through 40. Throughout the Bible, Egypt is always a type of world. The Israelites is, in this particular passage are a type of Christ, and Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Never, now let's find out, let's find out now, what do this mean to you? Here it is, we have Moses. Now, the Israelites, the, the Israelites was in bondage. They was in bondage, they was, they was, uh, under Pharaoh, Pharaoh who was Satan. They was under Pharaoh now. Pharaoh, no, the Israelites are God's chosen people. 
God chosen people. We are God chosen people. We are all here. God's chosen people. Now the Israelites are God's chosen people. And now they are in a place. They are in a place where they are under Egyptians. And the, they are under Egyptians. And these Egyptians had taskmasters. And the taskmasters was to make their life miserable. <laughs> How they The taskmasters were to do everything to make them discouraged. To do everything to make them get out the will of God. To do everything to make them turn from God. To do everything to make them give up from God. How many of y'all got some taskmasters that's trying to wear you out, that's trying to wear you down, that's trying to make you give up, that's trying to make you throw in a towel. So here it is, the Israelites uh, was taskmasters. Uh, now, now, here it is, they cried out, they, I mean, the Israelites had taskmasters over them. Now here it is, they cried out to God. They cried out. The more they was afflicted, the more they cried out to God. And they crying out they was praying unto God. Nikia, what you mean? They labored in prayer. They labor in prayer. Now, listen to this. They cried out to God. And before they, God heard their cries the first time. God knew what they was going to go through. God already knew what they, what they was going to go through. God knew they was going to go to the wilderness. God knew that they, let me, let me just take you to the scripture. Let me take you to the scripture. And then, and then he said to Abram, now certainly the, that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they will afflict them 400 years and also the nation who they serve I will judge afterwards they shall come out with great possessions they will shall come out with great possessions now listen God already knew what they was going to go through before they went through it. I come to let you know, I don't know what you may be going through or what you may be facing, but God already knew you was going to go through what you was going through before you even went through it. Now here it is, they cried out for, to God. God said they was going to be in this for 400 years. But listen, God heard they cries the first time. Somebody, God heard your prayer the first time. God heard they cried the first time. And listen. God was raising up their deliverer. When they was crying out to God in prayer, their deliverer wasn't even born yet. Their deliverer wasn't even born yet. Hallelujah. God raised up Moses. Moses who was born to deliver. What you was born to do. What you was called to do. What God has told you to do. Here it is. God raised up Moses to deliver the Israelites out of slavery. To deliver the, to deliver the Israelites from out of bondage. Now here it is. He raised up Moses. Now Moses... Now, you, now, let me tell you. First, you know when we are, when you, and you, you know, it's a lot of females. Females, you know when we are in a place of labor and delivery, hallelujah, we go through labor. Sometimes we go, being pregnant, you go through trimesters. You go through, there's different trimesters as your stomach, as the baby grow inside of you, you go through trimesters. Well, I come today because we, I have, uh, we going through, in this walk with Christ, we go through, I call it the three T's. The three T's. It's not trial, Mr., but we go through a trial, we go through a test, and then we triumph. We go through a trial, we go through a test, and then we triumph. Now here there's Moses. The, the, the enemy tried to kill Moses when he was a baby. It said when he was a baby, uh, how the, how Pharaoh said, kill all the firstborns. Kill f all the first sons. The firstborn sons, kill all of them. Here it is. The enemy tried to kill him and get rid of him from, from before, that, by the, when he was born. They, how many times, come on somebody, what you been going through since you've been born? Uh, that ever since you've been born, it's it been one thing after another. Uh, every, you, you've been going through hurt. You've been going through pain. Uh, you've been going through letdown. Uh, some been through molestation. Uh, some been going through, you've been going through since you was a kid. Uh, the enemy was trying to get rid of you since the day you was born. Uh, the enemy was trying to get rid of you since the day, uh, since the day you got in your mother womb. Uh, come on, somebody. The enemy been trying to get rid of you because he knew you was a threat to the nation. He knew you was a threat for your generation. He knew you was a threat to the, kid, to the enemy's camp. He been trying to get rid of you from day one. First, Moses, the devil tried to kill him at birth. And he had his mother thank God for, thank God for a woman who obeys God. Obedience means a lot. His mother, Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted all the first sons killed 
But the mother sent him off. The mother put him, put him in, a, in a lake, and, and then the Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter, I mean, Pharaoh's daughter sent this, see, this, see Moses inside the, the ocean crying. I'm paraphrasing because we're going to move right along. She raised him up. So now here is an Israelite. He is now pulled away from his family. He is now pulled away from, he is now pulled away from his culture. Now he's, now he's being raised up as an Egyptian. Let me tell you something. God will isolate you before he elevates you. God will isolate you before he elevates you. Come on, Abraham. Leave from your family. Leave from your generation. Leave from all of them and go where I tell you. And listen, and God never told him where he was going. He said, when you get there, I tell you. All you got to do is just go. I don't need you to understand. I need you to obey. I need you to obey now. Here it is. Moses is now pulled away from his family. He's raised up as an Egyptian. Now one day, Moses sees his people. Moses always knew who he was. See, when you know who you was, the devil can't do nothing with you. You got to know who you are in God. When you know who you are in God, the devil can't do nothing with you. That's why you're still standing. That's why you're still surviving. That's why you're still thriving. That's why you're still giving God praise. Because you know who you are in God. And no matter what the enemy tried to do, you still standing. The fact that you are here today, you are still standing after every attack, after every letdown, after every hurt, after everything that you've been through, you are still standing. Moses now see his people, the Israelites. He see the Egyptians beating him, beating him. And Moses got mad. Moses had a burden. See, Moses had a burden and his burden was to deliver. And that's because he was called to deliver. Do anybody got a burden for people? Do anybody got a burden for souls? Do anybody got a burden anymore? He had a burden. And so when he seen his fellow Israelites being beaten by the Egyptians, he killed the Egyptian. Someone seen him kill him, and Moses flee. Moses leave. Now here it is. God called Moses to deliver. Now, the first, I said the first, the first stage is trial. You want to, you want to, you want to trial. When you want trial, it, all eyes is on you. When you want trial, everything is on you. They looking at you. They watching you. They want to hear what you got to say. They want to see your response. They want to see your response. Here it is. Moses is on trial. Not, he's not only on trial by the Egyptians or he's not only on trial by the Israelites, but he's on trial by God. But thank God he has a great crowd of witnesses that's coaching him on. A great crowd of witnesses that's telling him to go on. You got a great crowd of witnesses that's telling you to keep on going. He's on trial. What do you do when God has called you to do something? Here it is, God called Moses to deliver. What do you do when God called you to deliver when you can't even deliver yourself? What, what do you do when, when God called you to do something and you feel like you're not able to do it? You, don't, you feel like you're not qualified to do it. You feel like you don't, you don't have what it takes to finish what God said or to start what God said. Here it is. Mo Moses felt like, God, get somebody else. God, pick somebody else. God didn't, Moses didn't even want the assignment. How many times, uh, come on somebody here, God done called you to do something, you don't even want the assignment. You said God picked somebody else to do it. God called somebody else to do it. God choose somebody else. God, I can't do it, God. He said, God, listen, I can't even talk, God. I'm, I'm not qualified to do this, God. I'm not able to do this, God. Father, pick somebody else. God said to Moses, who, make man's mouth? who makes your mouth? Man don't make your mouth. God called the unqualified and make them qualified. So now, you hear, you see Moses now on the test. So, not only that, but God sent Moses help. He sent Aaron. Thank God for help. Somebody get ready for your help. Your help is on the way. He sends Aaron. 
to be the mouthpiece. But even with sin and Aaron, he never stopped saying, I'm going to stop using you. <laughs> he still chose, he still chose Moses. Now, here goes the test. And when I was studying this, it blessed me because God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. So he said, God told him, this is what I'm going to do. You go to Pharaoh and tell him. That. Now, let me tell you, this was a promise that was made to Abraham over 300 years ago. This is, God said that he was going to deliver them. What did God say to your great parents, your great great grandparents, your great? Don't you know you are called for such a time as this? Don't you know you are called for a reason? He told him, he said, listen. He said, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. After going back and forth with God, how many times we go back and forth with God? After going back and forth with God, he went and he told Pharaoh to let my people go. And Pharaoh looked at him, and I'm paraphrasing, and laughed. <laughs> How many times the enemy came after you? <laughs> and he see, listen, he see you praying. He see you seeking, a God, seeking God. He see you laboring and praying. And he just look at you and laugh. Things start happening in your life. Situations start happening in your life. Uh, people start saying, we're your God in this situation. We're your God in this circumstance. Uh, the enemy just look at you and laugh. Uh, hallelujah. Here it is. Everyone, the Israelites, everyone was excited because they said they deliver us here. They were excited because they said God has now come. God has now come to see about us. Uh, we're about to be delivered from the slave. We're about to be delivered from this enemy. We're about to be delivered from these burdens. We're about to be delivered. Now what happened? Here this Pharaoh goes. I mean, here go Moses go to Pharaoh. Moses go to Pharaoh and tell him what the Lord said. Now you would think that after the Lord tells you to do something and you do it, that everything will be fine. What do you do when God tells you to do something and it don't work out the way you expect it? What do you do when God tells you that you've been obedient to God but the situation don't look like what God said. How, what do you do when God called you to do something? But the way it's looking, the way it's going, the way it seems, it don't look like God's hand is on it. It don't look like God is working it out for my good. It don't look like God is in this. What do you do when all odds is against you, but when you're just only being obedient to God? But listen, Moses this is the test now. Moses become very discouraged. He go to God and said, God, you know, why you, be he became discouraged because when Moses stepped out on faith, the enemy turned the fire up. The Bible said that these, that Pharaoh started telling them they had to work, they had to work twice as hard. Like, they had to work twice as hard. So the enemy turned the fire up and they became mad at Moses. They became upset with Moses and said, listen, uh, just leave us alone. Sometimes they like, like, just leave us alone. Just let us stay where we at. Let us go. Some of us is so, we so comfortable with living in misery. We so comfortable of the familiar. We don't want to come out the familiar. We don't want to come out the familiar and know that God got something greater on the other side. Some of us stay in relationships uh, knowing that the relationships don't mean us no good, uh, but we stay in there for comfortability. Uh, some of us stay on jobs, uh, knowing that this job is nothing but the devil, uh, but we stay there because we familiar. Some of us are staying in places. Uh, come on, you staying in that apartment when God called you for a home. You staying on that job when God called you to run a business. Some of us are staying in familiar because we're we scared of the unfamiliar. We're scared of what God will really do in our life. Some of us are comfortable because, listen, we don't know no other way. It didn't work for our great grands. It didn't work for our grands. It didn't work for our mother. It didn't work for our father. It, it didn't work. So what, why would it work for me? Why wouldn't it work for you? God is looking for ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Now here it is. But in the test, the test was only, the test is only to test your obedience to God. The test was only, here it is God, here it is God sent Moses to go back. And now, now God knew. God said, I'm going to, I'm going to heart in Pharaoh's heart. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to heart in his heart. And listen, he's not going to let y'all, he's not going to let y'all free. Hallelujah. So listen, 
but it's okay because I'm going to get the glory out of this story. I'm going to get the glory out of this situation. Now, listen, here, now we go to a place now, he's discouraged. Now you got the Israelites, they are mad. They are mad at Moses. So now, Moses go back to God again. Moses kept going back to God. God kept saying, go back to Pharaoh, go back to Pharaoh, go back to Pharaoh, and tell him to let my people go. Imagine if Moses would have gave up. Um, some of us, we give up on after, after we go, after we step out on faith, and we go after God, and it don't work out the way we want it to work out. We give up. Uh, God, you said this was going to happen, and it didn't happen. Some of us got promises that's over our life, uh, and we stepped out. Uh, we stepped out, but things didn't turn the way we wanted it. Things didn't work out the way we wanted it, and we gave up. But do it again. Moses kept going after, God. Moses kept going to Pharaoh again and again and again. You can't let, you cannot let this enemy run rampant in your life. You cannot let this enemy uh, do everything that he's trying to do to kill, steal, and destroy you. You got to, you got to take this enemy down. And the only way you can take this enemy down is in prayer. Moses labored in prayer. He kept going after God. He kept seeking the face of God. He kept trusting God. And God kept telling him to keep going. God kept telling him to keep going, keep going, keep going. Now we get, here it is. God sent, he sent flies. He sent hell. He, he, sent, he, sent, he sent the bloodbath to show that his hand was on Moses the whole time. No matter what the enemy tried to do, he showed that his hand was on Moses the whole time. When we get to the 10th plague, he sent 10 plague. The 10th one, God said, and this is going to be the last one. And about this time tomorrow, he said, and today I'm going to deliver you. Today, the enemy that you see today, you shall see no more. Which goes, with, which goes, to, our, which goes to our text. Our text, and when, it, when he said, he said, the Bible tells us that the Egyptians was, draw, was coming close, was coming near. Pharaoh was coming near to the people of Israel, and they lift up their eyes and see Pharaoh coming. And behold, the Egyptians was marching after them, and they feared greatly. They see, now here it is, they're about to be delivered. They now, they are now at a place where their deliverance is here. They're about to be free from this enemy. And now when they on, they on their way out, they, the enemy is on their tail. Come on somebody, when I'm trying to do good, evil's always present. Uh, when I'm trying to do right, here comes the enemy. Uh, when, I'm trying to, when I'm trying to live right, here comes the enemy. Uh, when I'm trying to fast and pray, here comes the enemy. Uh, when I'm trying to do what God say, here comes the enemy. But not only was Pharaoh coming, but they became scared. And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, Nikita, what do you mean? What you labored for in prayer, God is about to deliver. This is a season where you are going from labor to delivery. What you labored about to God in prayer, what you've been praying about over and over and over, you've been seeking God about, you've been going to God about it. Come on, some of y'all got promises on your life, uh, and you say, God, when is going to happen? Uh, God, when you going to do it? Uh, God, when I'm going to get the breakthrough? Uh, God, when I'm going to get the good, when I'm going to get the healing? God, when is going to happen? What you've been labored about to God in prayer over and over and over, listen, what you've been labored about, God is about to deliver, and he said, I'm about to deliver today. Not next week, not next year. I'm about to do it today. Why? Because God is not doing it for you. He's doing it to make his name great. He's doing it to show himself that he's been with you the whole time. When other people walked out of your life, when other people gave up on you, when other people left you for dead, God said, I'm about to show that I've been with you the whole time. I'm about to deliver that thing you've been praying about. You're going from labor to delivery. And anytime you are in delivery, anytime you're about to deliver, the contractions become stronger. 
Anytime you you close to giving birth to something, uh, you about you about to give birth to something great. Uh, somebody said you somebody you need to know on today. You about to give birth to something great, uh, and that's the reason why you going through everything you going through uh, because you're about to give birth to something great. Uh, and what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy before you even reach there. Uh, you're about to give birth to something great. Uh, for much is given, uh, much is required. How much pain you been going through? Uh, how much hurt you been going through? Uh, how much letdown you been going through? How much frustration you been going through? You're about to deliver something great. Uh, listen, you're about to give birth. Uh, when you are close to getting birth, uh, the contractions become harder. The contractions become stronger. And not, not it's, it's when you first, when you, at the beginning of your contractions, they could be 20 minutes apart. They could be 10 minutes apart. They could be five minutes apart. When you come in closer and closer to giving birth to something, it's like everything in your life just go upside down. It's like the tax becomes stronger. It's like the warfare becomes stronger. Every time you turn around, it's one thing after another. If it's not the kids, it's the husband. If it's not the husband, it's the wife. If it's not the wife, it's the job. If it's not the job, it's the bills. If it's not the bills, it's the ministry. Every time you turn around, there's something. But get ready. I come to let you know on today. God comes to set the captive free. I come to let you know on today. For those who believe shall receive. For those who believe shall receive. The fact that you are here today. I come to tell somebody on today. You are here today. After everything you have been through. After everything you have faced. After everything. It goes to show that you kept getting up. Every time you got out your bed. The enemy was terrified. Every time you got out your bed. The enemy was angry. Every time you opened up your eyes. Uh, they, the enemy said, oh, here she come. Uh, oh, here he go. Uh, hallelujah. The enemy been trying to stop you from knowing who you are in God. Because he know once she know or he know who he are in God, I don't have a chance. But I come to let you know on today that what you've been laboring for in prayer, God said, I'm going to do it today. God said, I'm going to do it today. Here it is. Uh, here it is when we get to the verse. Uh, when you get to the verse, uh, it, the, um, um, uh, Moses tell, the Moses tell the Israelites, stand still. But you scared? Stand still. Yeah, I, we see Pharaoh coming. Wait, what you moving for? Don't move. Don't back up. Don't give up. Stand still. He said, why? Because listen, it reminds me, huh? I talked about it on my prayer, on my prayer line. I said, listen, huh? when you stand still, huh? listen, it reminds me of when we, when we in school, huh? you know, when you in school huh? and you got, you know, there's a fight, uh, you know, you have a fight with somebody in school huh? and you got some big sisters and some big brothers, uh, hallelujah, you ain't even got to get your hands dirty. Huh? You don't even have to fight in this fight. Huh? Listen, you, cause your big sister going to fight for you or, or your big brother going to fight for you or you got a bunch of cousins that will fight for you. And they said, listen, you ain't got to worry. You ain't got to get your hands dirty in this fight. I'm going to do this for you. God told me to tell you, this one is on me. God said, this one is on me. Somebody need to know this battle is going God. God said, I got this one. I got this one. The warfare you've been going through, the frustration you've been going through, the headache you've been going through, that sickness in your body. Hallelujah. God said, Hallelujah. God said, this one is on me. I got this one. Just stand still. Moses said, Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still, because I'm going to save you. Stand still, because I'm about to deliver you. Stand still. He said, because God said, I'm going to fight this battle. Some of us is so frustrated because we've been trying to, we've been fighting our own battles. Some of us is worn out because we've been fighting our own battles. Uh, some of us is tired. Some of us is tired of being tired. You are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hallelujah. You're sick and tired of the same old thing. Uh, you're sick and tired of the same old life. Uh, you're sick and tired every time you come home. Uh, it's nothing new. Uh, and you say, God, why am I here? God, what, what is my life is about? Uh, God, I don't see a change. Uh, God, I don't see nothing. Is this all? This is, this is it, God? Is this it? I, I know what you promised me. I, I know what you said. You said I'm the head and not the tail. So why I feel like everyone is walking on top of me? Why I feel, feel like that everyone is taking advantage of me? Why I feel like I'm dirt 
hurt and everybody's walking all over me. When you said I'm the head and not the tail. God, you said I'm above and not beneath. Why are people looking down on me, God? You, you, you call me to do great things, but I don't feel great. You call me to do mighty things, but I don't feel mighty. I don't feel you, God. Are you with me, God? Are you here, God? You see me, God, praying. You see me coming after you. You see me laboring, God. I'm laboring through the sweat. I'm laboring through the tears. I'm laboring through the hurt. I'm laboring through the discomfort. I'm laboring, God, even when I don't even want to speak to you. I'm still seeking you. Then he said, I'm the lender and not the borrower. These are the promises of God. Then God, why do I feel broke, busted, and disgusting? Why my money is funding, God? Why am, I, why am I having warfare in my finances, God? Why, God, am I going through this, God? Why I got to borrow money from Paul to pay Peter? Why, God, is this going on? When you said, God, your word said this. And you're not the man, you should lie. Nor the son of man, you shall repent. If you said it, you shall do it. If God said it, you could bank on it. I come to let you know on today, whatever God said over your life, whatever the promises, his promises is yay and amen. And I don't care what the enemy is trying to do in your life. You going from labor to delivery. God said, I'm going to do it. To, I'm going to do it for you. And I'm going to do it today. Somebody say today. Uh, I'm going to make a way today. Uh, I'm going to deliver today. Uh, I'm going to open up doors that no man can close uh, today. I'm going to do exceeding abundantly uh, above all you can ask or think. Uh, and I'm going to do it today. God said, stand still. But he said one more thing. One more thing Moses said to the Israelites. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. You ain't got to say a word. You don't got to prove anything. God said, I don't need you to speak for me. God said, hold your peace and let me do the talking. God said, hold your peace and let me do the talking. Hold your peace and let me vindicate you. Hold your peace and let me fight this battle. Hold your peace and let me work this situation out. Hold your peace. I'm coming to let you know today. God is about to deliver and he's going to deliver today. He about to give instructions. He about to give direction. He about to let you know how to do it and when to do it. We serve a God that is the God of order. God knows exactly what you need. God knows exactly what you're going through. God knows exactly what you're facing. And that thing you've been laboring about uh, you've been praying about uh, some of y'all been having it in your mind uh, some of y'all been having it in your heart uh, sometimes the attack been so much you can't even utter it out your mouth uh, but I'm here to let you know uh, God sees where you at uh, and God seen where you was going to be uh, before you even got where you at today and God has raised you up the reason why you want to know and we about to close uh, we about to close the re reason why you're going through so much warfare, you're going through so much letdown and pain, the area that you are being attacked in the most is what God called you to do. You want to know your calling? The area that God called, the area that you are being attacked in the most is your calling. And the enemy job it's to sniff you as weak. But thank God we serve a risen Savior who said, I prayed that your faith fell not because I'm going to get you out of this. And when I get you out of this, I need you to go strengthen your brethren. I need you to go tell everyone that I'm the Lord Jehovah Jireh, that I'm the Lord Jehovah Nisi, uh, that I'm the, the Lord Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Shara, that I'm the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I'm the Lord that delivered you. This is for my glory. This is for my glory. You are going from labor to delivery. Stand still. You ain't got to throw it in the towel. You ain't got to go back. You don't have to give up. Stand still. Keep on seeking. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Keep on fasting. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord said, what I'm going to do today Today is the day 
that you shall be delivered. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice to be glad. Whatever it is that thing that you've been worried about, God said, today I'm going to do it for you. Then whatever that thing uh, that you've been, it been on your mind, uh, you got an issue that you need God to work out this week. You need God to do it this week for you. You need God to turn it this week for you. You need God to make a way this week for you. You need God to come and vindicate you this week. Uh, listen, he said, I'm going to do it today. Why you in here worshiping me? Why you in here praising me? Why you in here glorifying me? I'm taking care of that situation right now, today. Uh, somebody give God praise. I'm doing it for you today. I'm working it out for you today. Unexpected. Get, ooh, not my soul, my mama see yeah. Get ready for the unexpected. Get ready for unexpected mail. Get ready for unexpected mail. Get ready for unexpected phone calls. Get ready for unexpected emails. Get ready because God is about to do the unexpected. It's going to blow your mind because God said, I'm about to deliver you today. No more being bound. No more being in slavery under the enemy. The enemy had you slaved. You, the enemy had you in slavery too long. No more. You break free on today. You are delivered on today. He's going to work it out for you today. Listen, your kids, don't worry about it. It's working out today. Your grandkids, don't worry about it. You've been praying about it. God is doing it today. Yes, he's going to bring the unsaved. And they're going to come through this door. Today he's doing it. Today he's touching their heart. Today he's working it out. The last T is triumph because God delivered them just like he said. God is going to do just what he said. But listen to this, Pastor. God never told Moses how he was going to do it. He just said, I'm going to do it today. And because Moses believed God. See, not only was God dealing with Pharaoh, but God was also dealing with Moses. God was building his faith and God was building his faith. And it took Moses to continue to be obedient to God. I'm coming to let you know in this season, no matter what, you got to be obedient to God. No matter how it look, no matter what goes on, no matter the situation, you have to be obedient to God even when it don't look like God. You got to trust God. Because God doing a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Have you not known it? He's going to make a way in the wilderness. He's going to make a way. In the, he made a way for, he made a way for the, his chosen people. You are chosen by God. Get ready for God to make a way. You are chosen by God. Get ready for God to, listen, so many times we expect the enemy Expect God. So many times we expect bad news because we're so used to the bad. Expect God. God said, I'm, listen, he told me to tell this house on today, Morning Star Church, you are going from labor to delivery. We are in a season where God is delivering. God is delivering what he said. God is fulfilling his promises. 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 Those who suffer with me, those who suffer with me are also going to reign with me. If you suffer, baby, get ready. Get ready for God to reign in your life. Get ready for God to reign in your situation. Get ready for God to reign in your career. Get ready for God to reign. He's about to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think. Watch God work. Watch God work. He said, I need you to expect me. Because you coming out of this, you coming out on top. Why? Because at the end, daddy wins. At the end, daddy wins. <laughs> at the end, daddy wins. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care what he, he know the way that you shall take. And after you've been tried in the fire, you shall come forth as pearl gold. Sometimes God got to have us to go through some fire so we're in us could come out of us. Sometimes we got to go through some storms for we're in us could come out of us. Sometimes we got to go through some letdowns for we're in us could come out of us. Sometimes we got to go through some things so God can open our eyes to see that everyone around us is not for us. And everybody don't need to celebrate your blessings with you. 
Sometimes God got to remove. God isolate before he elevates. God isolate before he elevates. God isolate before he elevate. Ha na 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 soul. When there's greatness on your life, everyone can be around you. When you are called to do great and mighty things, everyone can be around you. But God will send Aaron. He will send Aaron to help you. It will be a divine connection. Father, we thank you for this time. Father, we thank you for, if you believe that this is your season, that you're going from labor to delivery, if you believe it, give God praise. If you believe God is going to do it on your behalf, give God praise. You got to keep on going when it don't make sense. Let me tell you, I'm, me, who's a young woman, I raised three daughters. Two was my biological kids and one was adopted. I was 21 years old raising three kids. I had my first baby at a young age. At a young age, you know, I, I, you know, I ain't even gonna go there. I had, my, I had my first baby at a young age. I was in high school. And when I became 18, I had my baby at 17. When I became 18, I said, I'm moving out of my mother's house. Because if I'm grown enough to go out there and make this baby, then I'm grown enough to go out there and take care of my baby on my own and not put my responsibility on my mother. At 17 years old, I was already looking for an apartment. I wound up going into a shelter. Didn't even tell my mother where I was going. I took me and my, two, and me and my one daughter at the time, I took me and my one daughter on my 18th birthday. I went and checked myself into a shelter. The people called my mother because they knew that, they knew I had to tell them that was my last place that I lived. So they called my mother and my mother was like, Kia, I didn't kick her out. What's she doing there? I said, Ma, I'm not coming back home. So because my mother told me I could come back home, they denied me. But I didn't give up. I said, I'm not going home. I'm going to stay here until I'm approved. So when you denied, you got to do the whole thing over again. They denied me three times. And I stayed right there sleeping, right there on the floor, inside the shelter with my kids, with my daughter at the time, I had one daughter. I stayed there until I got approved. The third time they denied me, because they put you in a hotel, you stay there while they investigate for 10 days, then after that, you get a letter at your hotel to let you know if you are denied or approved, and then if they deny you, you gotta go back to the EAU. And if they approve you, then they take you to what they call a tier two. They denied me three times. So I had to stay there, wait for placement, or over again to be placed in another hotel, and I got my, got my stroller, got my bags, but I was determined. I said, I'm not going back to my mother because I'm not going to put this burden on my mother. By the time the third time I had to go inside to see the investigators and they was like, miss, you keep being denied. I said, let me tell you something, sir. No disrespect. When you go home every night, when you wake up in the morning, you turn over, who do you see? He said, I got a wife. I turn over to my wife. I said, well, that's how it's going to be every time you walk into this office every morning. I'm going to be right here because I'm not going nowhere until you approve me because I'm not going back home to my mother. He looked at me and he said, you approved. <laughs> he said, you approved. And that was at 18 years old. And at 18 years old, I stayed in the shelter. They put me in a nice apartment. You get a little, little nice, a nice little uh, apartment and you get your own key, and you get your own kitchen and living room, but it's a shelter, but you get your own, you got your own apartment. I stayed there for 10 months, 10 months, and I moved into my apartment for the first time. When I moved into my apartment, I, uh, you know, before I moved into my apartment, I, I wanted, to, you know, security, who was security in the building, but <laughs> I started a relationship with him, he started, and he became my second baby daddy. <laughs> But listen, <laughs> I 
I didn't want the I don't I, I wanted to raise my daughters in a way because just because my life was not right or just because I made mistakes that don't mean it's gonna happen for my kids just because things ha listen you could break curses you are a generational cur let me tell you I went into the shelter then when I got into, got into my apartment after being in my apartment for over uh, almost two years then my second daughter came and now me and her father, we are, we are together. He come, he's staying with me and we, we raising a family. So then I was able to bring on another child. I went, I seen a family, I seen one of my family members going through, um, going through something and I felt like I knew what she was going through because I've been through some things. I've been through some, I've been through some things in my life. So I knew exactly where she was at. So I knew that I was in, remind you, her mother left her at my house for a whole week. So I said, and, and there were some things that she told me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to go to court and I'm going to fight for you. I said, this is what you really want. I'm going to fight all the way to the end. I went to court for it and I won. So now I have three kids. 21 years old with three kids in my house. Three girls. Three girls. Lord Jesus. Girls. Three girls. But I said, I'm going to make sure they don't live the life I live. I'm going to make sure that they don't experience what I, I experienced. Fast forwarding today, all three of them graduated from high school. All three of them graduated from high school. When my, when my oldest one, when the, the, one who I, the one who I had adopted, I said when she graduated from high school, I was going to let her go back with her mother. So after she graduated, because I made a vow to God that I was going to keep her until she graduated, because I'm going to break the curse of young ladies and young men that's not making it through high school. So I said, I'm going to break the curse that's in her generation. She's going to make it. So she graduated from high school, and I let her go back with her mother. My two daughters now I had to raise. My two daughters went through college. My, my oldest daughter graduated, just graduated last year with her master's in criminal justice. My oldest daughter is now, is now going to school for going to Brooklyn Law to become a lawyer. She's going to Brooklyn Law this, this, this fall to become a lawyer. And my, now my, my, old, my youngest daughter, she wanted to do nursing, but she found out nursing was too much for her. She said, no, I quit nursing, and she went to criminal justice. So now she go back to school for her bachelor's in criminal justice. So just because situations may happen to you, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen to your kids. I don't care how it look. You got, to, you got to be different. You got to act different. Listen, you can't be like everybody else. Let me tell you, my family members like oh uh, why are you this and why are you that and let them do this and let them do that no 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 because I know what made me fall into the traps that I made uh, that I went in and I'm not going to let it happen to my kids not only did I make sure that my kids make it but I made sure my nieces make it because all my nieces were staying with me uh, so they all started coming over to auntie house uh, and I made sure that every last one of them made it through high school and now every last one of them made it through college listen uh, hallelujah God has called you up for such a time as this. The generation behind me never went that far. But let me tell you something. When, listen, I was raised up for such a time as this. You was raised up for such a time as this. I don't care what may happen to you. Listen, somebody say, but God. Just because it happened to you, it doesn't mean it's going to happen to your generation. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to your children. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to everyone that's connected. You got the power to change your circumstance. Do you trust the God that you serve? I thank you, Father. We thank you for your word on today. Let your word heal, deliver, and set free, God. We thank you, God, on today. Father, because you do great and mighty experts, God. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in these, your people, God. Oh, Father, continue to show yourself mighty. Continue to show yourself strong in the mix of a storm. Huh? Father, I thank you right now because on today, huh, they are delivered. On today, huh, they are set free. On today, huh, they are healed. I don't know who feels sick in their body, huh, but you healed on today huh, by the blood of the Lamb. Huh, that the, the, by the blood that was set, come on, that was shed on Calvary. You are healed on today. Huh. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in these people. We thank you for what you're doing in your chosen. We thank you for what you're doing in your selected. Father, we thank you on today, God. Father, we forever give your praise. We forever give your honor. We forever give your glory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we're expecting you on this week. We're expecting a move on this week. We're expecting our approval on this week. We're expecting you to show up on this week. We're expecting you to deliver on this week.
We're expecting that you're doing it today. Thank you in advance for the great things that you are doing in the lives of your people. You've heard this message today and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Well, today is your day. Pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I declare that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe with my heart that God raised you from the dead. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you pray that prayer, we believe right where you are. The Father also wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. We also refer to it as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so I pray this prayer of thanks for you. Father, I thank you for those who have prayed this confession of faith for the first time and are in expectancy of the baptism in water and in the Holy Spirit. I thank you for those who've strayed away from you and are now restored. Father, baptize them afresh. Thank you for saving, delivering, and setting free. Thank you for filling their very presence with your presence. Thank you for signing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank you in the name of the one who died, rose again, and lives forevermore, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Congratulations! You've made a good decision today. And we want to connect with you and get you some materials to help you in your walk with the Lord. You can call us or text us. You can also reach us by email at info at welcometomorningstar.org. It is with joy that we welcome you into the family of God. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you've been uplifted, encouraged, and inspired. Like and subscribe today. The Lord be with you and cover you and your families.